Hello everyone. How are you doing? How have you been since the last time we met by the grace of God? I believe the Lord has preserved you. The Lord has kept you. I believe you have had a wonderful time within yourself. Thank you for joining through today by the grace of God. And I pray God has sustained all of us. Amen and amen. Uh, it's been one week. I believe all of us, those who have been fasting and praying, we have seen the hand of God so far. And today, by the grace of God, I know we shall be looking at two things. Soul ties, by the grace of God. And I pray we will be understanding. There will be understanding for all of us. If you have any questions, please send it through. Tell your friends to join in. Tell your friends to log in, by the grace of God. And I believe God will help us. He will give us understanding today in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. As we wait for Miriam to come forth, so that you can proceed by the grace of God. I believe you are set. If you have any question, why not? Share it out. Why don't you share and send, to our, send a message to a friend? There's a button there called send. It looks like a kite. Why don't you send it and invite someone you think they want them to be blessed on today's session by the grace of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is kind. Amen and amen. So what have you been doing that is interesting about this quarantine season? <laughs> uh, the pandemic is truly changing economies, changing perspectives, changing the intentions of men. What have you been up to? What have you been doing? Amen. What have you been doing? I believe there's something that you've been cooking there. We hope to see you coming out forth stronger than before. We hope to see you coming out stronger than ever. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, please just know these sessions will continue every Tuesday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And by the grace of God, I believe all of us shall be ministered to. All of us shall have a wonderful time. All of us shall have an enjoyment in our timings together. And we shall be transformed. And we shall be helped. We shall be enabled. We shall come out stronger. If you have pertinent questions that you think you want us to talk about, don't shy off. Just send them across. Just send them across those questions. Please, someone reach out to Miriam and just let Miriam to log in, please. So we can proceed. Uh, time is really being consumed by the grace of God. Amen and amen. So these sessions were mainly meant for us to have a beautiful time. These sessions were meant for us to have a beautiful time. So that we can have, a, so we can have a change of story. So these sessions, I believe, there'll be a transformation for every Christian outside there, who's believing God for their own change of story. Amen. Amen. Uh, hi, Miriam. Hi. How are you? I, I, I started like... developing uh, a very serious running nose. So sorry for the delay, but I'm here now. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that Jesus cured the mother of Peter with a fever. So anything, a symptom like that one, just know it was also cured. Okay? Stay name. strong, stay healthy in Jesus' name. Yeah. What, do, what are we up to today? By the grace of God. All right. All right. I was actually composing myself. So for today, we are going to discuss about soul ties. It's a very controversial topic. I noticed recently some people were having a conversation about it, but from a secular perspective. So I think today we can do soul ties. I hope that's comfortable with you. It's comfortable, my dear. So what I'd like to yeah. ask you first, so that we proceed straight. What are soul ties? What exactly? How would you describe soul ties? Yeah. Okay. But before we jump to the answer to the question, why don't you why don't we pray? Ask God for God to give us understanding for His Word yes. as everything we talk for in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name okay. of Jesus, we thank you. We appreciate you. We give you all the praise and honor. Give us understanding. Help us, Lord. Everyone, Lord, expecting an answer, Lord, give them. We are the only one who can give answers of the intentions of our heart. We say thank you and we appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, you said it's a controversial thing. What do you mean? What's a secular point of view of it? By the way, you said something very I don't know strong. Other people, 
a lot of people don't believe in soul ties like they don't think it's real you know mm-hmm. they don't yeah, think so, it's real yeah some people do say like it doesn't exist because how would you explain what are soul ties that's why i was asking what are soul ties uh, how do they overcome their ex <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to have a topic on overcoming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, overcoming our past relationships. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I-, I pray for grace for you, Miriam, especially. If that is it, may God give you understanding. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing with you. I'm playing with you. So what's a soul tie? A soul, a soul tie is an unseen bond between two or more people. It's an uh-huh. unseen bond. It's something that you don't see. It's a bond. Yeah. You know bond? You remember when you were learning chemistry? Bonding. Structure and bonding. Yeah? It's yes. a bond, you understand? And it can happen between the same sex and different sexes. And also it can happen yes. to things like animals or inanimate things. So it's an mm-hmm. insane bond between two or more people. Yeah. yeah. That's a soul and, tie. Uh, yeah. So can, can, can people have soul ties with other things or does it just occur between humans and humans? Yeah, they can have with other things, you know. It's possible. It's based on how it came through to you. You understand? That thing that you call a necklace. You understand? Mm-hmm. That thing you call a necklace. Or some people have pictures of their, of their past relationships, of past moments, you understand? Or they have bracelets, or they have rings that their, their first boyfriend ever gave them. You understand? You understand? Yeah. So that yeah. thing, they consider special. So uh, I, I can say it's that it's, it, what matters here more is how they channel and how that bond was created with that inanimate thing. The channel and how it was created, and it's very vital. That's why it stays within one as much as specific person does not want you to let it go. So, for example, yeah. you received a, a trophy from your mother. You can form a bond with it that the day you lose that trophy, you go berserk, you know? You get furious, you know? So, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Very possible. All right. Do you have a teddy bear? But- no, I don't have a teddy bear, but I have a necklace that my ex-boyfriend gave me. I've never thrown it away because it was the first present he gave me. So how oh do you... Oh my, so you have a, a bond with it already. So you have a soul tie with that. So every time you see it, you don't see the necklace, you see the person. But then that's very true. Every time I see, think of the person who gave it to me. Yeah, because it's an unseen bond. A soul tie is an unseen bond. It's something that you can, no one can see the bond, but it's more... In, I'll show you, we have the categories of soul tie. So it is, that's why it is like that. And the, if you don't address it, sometimes it can limit your next progress. It can limit your next future decisions if you don't address it. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about addressing it, why don't you tell us about how to overcome the toxic behaviors that we pick from these bonds or these soul ties? <laughs> toxic behaviors like what? <laughs> Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me think of a quick example. Asking for yeah. a friend, for that type of situation. Mm. Where so, um, mm. say for example, in your former relationship, you had, a, you had a behavior where... Okay, I'm trying to think of something practical. Uh, huh. Let's say you had a faulty relationship where your, your relationship was violent. But for okay. some reason, you reached a point where you enjoy violence. How do you break You enjoy that? violence. Yeah, the, I, I can say it. You, you just need to have four decisions. Number one, you need to desire to break that. What yes. you don't desire, you cannot change. You understand? If you see something, people are telling you there's a problem you're having. Maybe, for example, you're in a relationship that they taught you how to eat. You just became a foodie person. So every time they call you, say it's foodie time. Foodie time. You understand? until yeah. when the person goes you feel like ah no one else will take me out no one can take me out so the first thing you need to desire a change you need to desire number two you need to decide after des- desiring you need to decide i will stop doing this you understand mm-hmm. number yeah. three you need to determine you need to determine that i will not have such kind of decisions or that kind of characters and lastly you must dedicate yourself to that desire to that decision and to that determination you understand? You must dedicate yeah. yourself to all that. Yeah. So that's the only way you can overcome it. Because it's so serious, you know? Soul ties yeah. are no jokes. That, that it can embed your character. It can transform your character if you're not careful. Yeah. So um, talking of soul ties, uh, let me take you to a direction where we are demystifying the understanding of soul ties. 
What are yeah. what are the kind of soul ties that exist? Okay, I I there I can state some, okay? First of all, we need to know what is our soul, okay? Our soul yeah. is the center of a human being, okay? Is that's why the Bible says, well, how will you gain the own world and lose your own soul? You understand? So for anything to occur, they must work around your soul. And your soul obtains and has different aspects of you. Number one, one kind of soul tie we can have is a biological soul tie. That is between you and your parents. That when your daddy talks to you or shouts at you, you start crying, you get emotional. You understand? Yeah. Yes. They didn't beat you, but because of how they talked to you, the emotional trigger, you understand, it's biological. This is someone who raised you, who became part of you. Number two, it can be spiritual, with spiritual fathers. You understand? You can yes. be spiritual with spiritual fathers. You understand? Talking about, for example, Elijah and Elisha, Elisha and Gehazi. Even as some of us were regarded to our parents, or our spiritual fathers, or spiritual mothers in the faith. Number three, it can be physical, because of a physical, physical moment. You remember a particular place where you, someone proposed to you. You understand? A physical place where you went with your friends for the first skydiving. You understand? Mm -hmm. yes. So it can become a part and parcel of you. Number four, it can be emotional between husband and wife or best yes. friends, a girl yes. to a girl. It can be emotional. You understand? Number six, it can be sexual. A covenant sex or uncovenanted sex. It can bring a soul tie. You understand? And lastly, it can be mental. A result of how someone abused you. Some of us have never forgotten what someone told them. That's why people say, I can forgive, but can never forget. But you see, Jesus say, before the sun goes down, forgive. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? So it, is, it can be rape. Someone was raped. You understand what I'm talking about? Mentally. That even if now a man touches them, they feel uncomfortable. And it becomes yeah. a problem if it's not addressed. You get to marriage, it becomes also a problem. You find yourself, you're not being the kind of husband you need to be or the kind of woman you're supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, I've so said there, are two, <laughs> there are two very critical things I've gotten from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The emotional soul tie, the sexual soul tie, and the aspect of forgiveness. Uh, let mm -hmm. me channel it towards that direction, beginning with uh, the sexual soul tie, because we live in a world right now where everybody is so comfortable with having sex at any time with anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people rarely know the repercussions of what they're doing right now until it's too late because yeah. unfortunately, we also live in a society where people don't really have that biblical understanding or the spiritual understanding of what soul ties are all about. So they, mm. so what would you dive deeper into sexual soul ties and emotional soul ties, then we can talk about forgiveness. Okay, now let me talk about sexual soul ties. Let me start with emotional. Anything before it becomes sexual, it started from an emotional perspective. Yes. Now, this is what something happens even those people are married or not married. It's something uh -huh. that happens. You understand what you're about? Yes. For yes. example, you said I'm dating a person, but I have no problem talking to my ex because he's just my friend. Yeah. So it means I have moved on mentally, but emotionally I've not left. Uh -huh. So he's still my confidant. So you're married to a wife, but there are some things you can't tell her. Why? Because of what? You feel like this person does not understand me emotionally. This is the other person who understands me emotionally. So yeah. emotional soul ties can be there and they can be so strong that can affect every decision you can make. So by the yeah. time, for example, I assume now I'm a married person, I'm a married man. I decide... Yeah. Be telling my wife all my emotional issues, I'll be telling you. Uh -huh. Now, the first thing I tell you, and I find it is comfortable for you, you understand me, you are better to listen to me. What happens? I start confiding in you more. And what happens? Uh -huh. It builds a deeper bond between me and you compared to me and my wife. And you see yeah. what happens? Emotionally, I am drawn to you, but physically, I can be in another place. Sure. And you see, it affects many people right now. That's why most people are unable to move on at all, at all, at all. And you see, it comes also to relationships. People who have been dating and they're unable to overcome it because emotionally, that person is how he sang for you, how he wrote letters for you, how he cooked for you. You understand? You're emotionally attached to his kind of foodie ability. Coming to sexual. Sexual soul ties is a very issue. It's a big issue that is affecting most marriages that most people don't know or the next relationship. 
you come sexually. Remember, the Bible says marriage is honorable when the Bible is not when the bed is not defiled. Now, the defilement of the bed it means that it removes honor. What is the honor there? When you have sex with someone, your soul become one. The Bible says you become one flesh. You become one person. You understand what I'm talking about? So the sexual engagement is what makes it become what people become one. That's why I'm saying if you engage sexually with someone, you tend to take their characters because there's an exchange of spirits. There's an exchange yeah. of whatever it is. You understand what I'm talking about? And this is something that affects people that now someone has been very sexually active with their former relationship. Now they meet someone who's born again. They don't believe in activeness sexually. It becomes a problem. He says, I don't know what's bothering me, but we will pull it together. But what is really bothering you is that because we can't have sex. Because you are tied in a thing that if someone loves me, we need to engage ourselves sexually actively. So this one affects people in terms of moving forward affects people in terms of destinies, affects people in everything they do. So sexual assault ties are very real and it can affect anyone. Emotional assault ties are very real and it can affect anyone. Yeah. Okay, so would you say forgiveness has any impact on soul ties? Like if you forgive somebody or if you forgive yourself, is it a way of breaking the soul tie or how do you break it? Uh, the, the beginning of stopping soul ties is by, like I told you, the four days. You need to desire it. But first of all, you need to identify what are you tied to. You understand? What is that thing that your soul cannot live without? What is that thing that makes you just cry and weep? What is that thing that just gives you a strong pull of something? What is that thing that has defined to you that if in a relationship, this is something that's supposed to happen? So forgiveness is something totally different we are talking about here as much as part and parcel of it. You understand what I'm talking about? You can yeah. forgive someone, but you're tied to them. Mm -hmm. Like how many people will say, I forgive you, I let you go. It's okay, you move on. I'll move on with my life. But after they go home, they cry the whole night. Yes. <laughs> so did they really, did forgiveness take care? No. The what they are crying for is they are missing the emotional time they will have together. Yes. Because that's why you say, I say, you hurt my feelings. What is the meaning of hurting my feelings? You hurt you had something that was very deep. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. so you, I can forgive you, but you cannot forget until mm -hmm. that viewers has the better information. And yeah. the first thing of that is Solta is get the right word. Uh -huh. When you know better, you live better. Yeah. All right. So um, aside from forgiving them you know you know forgiving people is not so easy people make it look like it's just i will wake up and do you. yeah how do you get to that point where you can forgive somebody doesn't it begin with forgiving yourself first and, and, no you cannot forgive yourself if you're not informed well uh-huh now when jesus talks even father jesus said father forgive them mm -hmm. or the cross jesus was working yeah. on a particular revelation and information Mm -hmm. What information was Jesus working for? My assignment on earth was to die for these people. Do you know, Miriam, you, I can slap you now and you can never choose to forgive me because I have never answered the question, why did I slap you? The beginning of forgiveness is knowledge. That's the beginning. That's what the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. No, you see, you cannot forgive unless you know why. You must know, is there a force behind it? You must know, yeah. is this something that was deliberate? You must know this thing. Unless you are informed, forgiveness becomes very hard. People say, forgive and forget. What do you mean forgive and forget? What am I forgiving? Yes. Yeah, I must know first of all what I'm forgiving. So if it comes to me, I'm forgiving myself. I must know what am I forgiving myself from? Am yes. I forgiving myself out of ignorance? Am I forgiving myself because I did it indeliberately? Or am I forgiving myself because someone took advantage of me? Now, if someone took advantage of you, you are obviously you'll be mad at the point that I didn't know it. So how will you make yourself feel better about it? You must come to the level of information. The mm -hmm. truth is what sets you free. You must know to forgive yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Have you forgiven me? <laughs> Miriam. Hmm? All right. Um, I don't know. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Did you hear my statement? I think maybe you're you are losing me. It's okay. 
We continue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question I want to engage you on is uh, there are soul ties that we know of because we know what we've been engaging in, yeah? We know what physical oh, yeah? bonds we have, we know what emotional bonds we have. But yeah. what yeah. about of things that have been done in the past in our lineage? Is there any possibility of bonds that were formed by maybe our grandmother and our forefathers following us? For example, if my grandmother was bonded with maybe adultery, for example, is there a possibility of that type of soul tie coming down to you? Now, there's what you call the seed of our forefathers and there's what you call soul ties, okay? Soul ties can lead uh -huh. to a curse. Okay. You need to know that. But a soul tie is something that is developed. For example, uh -huh. a girl dates seven men, and the eighth man becomes their husband. Yeah. And then he gets a daughter. Uh -huh. Will the daughter know about the other seven men? Mm -hmm. No, he will not. You understand? But yeah. what can be embedded to that daughter is what uh -huh. we call the generation or the spiritual impact of yeah. that activity. Yeah. You understand what I'm talking about? is the spiritual impact of that activity. So mm -hmm. what it can come through if it is something that was continued until it became a spirit within the family. So you find in your family, people sleep with 10 people, seven people. Mm -hmm. They cannot get married with the first person because why? The relationship was done by an individual. Like for example, you now, if you don't take responsibility and you move yeah. from one relationship to another, it become, mm -hmm. can, can become part and parcel of you until it becomes a spirit that you find even your children doing the same thing. Okay. So it's so, possible if it was a continuous thing until it became a curse. Number two, let me just say this one. It is possible in case maybe they engage in spiritual activities like witchcraft. You understand? And they believe yeah. like those people are coming from a witchcraft background that they need to give you an anklet, they need to give you a bracelet, or they need to try something in your stomach. Mm -hmm. You understand? So they transfer yeah. the spiritual person to, the, to another spiritual individual. So you say, this is what I've inherited from my father's fathers. So they say in your family, everyone must have this. It was because it was how it was brewed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? So it becomes now another soul type because now the spiritual man behind the incantations becomes part and parcel of you. Yeah. So it's possible in those two ways. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. well, at least now we have a clear understanding. Let me just get a few comments from, let me just read out a few comments that we are having from those who are streaming with us. So Shadid mm. says that he got a bracelet from his grandmother. So he's asking, does it have an effect on him? Because he realizes it has kept him more bonded to her than any other person. <laughs> okay. It has kept her, that's already a tie. It's that's already a soul tie. Because she repre the, the bracelet represents her mother. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a bracelet to her. To him, sorry. It's just a grandmother. So yeah. the only way we will ever overcome that one is maybe when he decides unconsciously that I, I, it's okay, my mother rested in peace, I cannot carry his spirit no longer, let me let it go. Now, let me tell you, Shadi, something. When Saul was not able to hear from God, Saul was the man who burned witchcraft in Israel. You understand? Mm -hmm. And Samuel had passed on. What did Saul do? Saul went to the same witchcraft and asked the witchcraft to bring the spirit of Saul, Samuel, so he can talk to him an attachment. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And God was not happy about that. You understand what I care about? So the question is this. This thing that you received is your choice to decide. Do you want to be yeah. forever with your grandmother or do you want to have a good blessed memory with your grandmother? So yeah. it is about that he has already. It's something that yeah. if you dare take it, you may have a problem with him. You understand? You may have a big problem with him. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And then... Also, Grace asks, uh, how, how does she know she has a soul type? What is she that you could, what is that thing that makes her not to, not go past some things? Mm -hmm. For example, if I talk about your, your ex, mm -hmm. what do you feel about it? Mm. What do you feel about it? You're not talking about yes. how, how you feeling? What is your reaction? Your reaction shows your heart. That's how you react. Uh -huh. How you react to it, you understand? You, yeah. you see, I talk with my wife. If, hear, if I hear you, you are trying to talk negatively against her, you do know I'll react. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. My heart is showing reaction. So that's how you can know you have a soul tie. 
Miriam, mm-hmm. I can't see. I don't know where you went to, but uh, don't uh, worry. I am here with you. I'm coming back shortly. So, uh, <laughs> says, uh, she gave it to him when she was. She's still alive. She's still alive. She gave it to him as a gift. So, moving forward with the question. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was just realizing my I needed to recharge my phone. Okay, mm. have you started breaking godly soul ties? Sorry, sorry. Repeat yourself. What did you say? How do you start embracing godly soul ties? And what are godly soul ties? Now there's ungodly soul ties and there's godly soul ties. What uh-huh. matters here is the foundation. Okay. Is the foundation of everything. You yeah. need to understand like, how do you build your soul ties as a result. For example, yeah. you marry a wife. You understand? Under the okay. platform of church and under the godly, and there's a parental blessing and there's a yeah. priestly blessing and there are witnesses who are blessing you. That mm-hmm. soul tie is good. It's godly. There's no yeah. way someone can come and stand against it. If you see that woman pregnant, you'll be happy. Is it true? Mm-hmm. But now you go and sniff with another woman there that's not even your wife. Yeah. When you see her pregnant, what will you do? You will deny. Most people deny. You understand? Most people get ashamed of it. Why? The foundation of everything is what matters. Now, look at the book of Matthew. Jesus says, come to me, all of you, at every level, and I shall give you rest. You understand? So, mm-hmm. when you build under the wrong foundation, it becomes ungodly. Like, yeah. for example, if Shadi was given that... Give, that uh, what do you call it? The bracelet he was, he was given by God, by the, by the grandmother, on, and a grandmother from a godly perspective, it has nothing wrong because it's already a gift. But the yeah. problem would have been if it, had, it was something that was, that was incantation upon it. I'd say, yeah. this one, if you take it, it will protect you. It will preserve you. It will distinguish you. You understand what I'm talking about? Those yeah. things cannot. That one now, that one, because it takes the place of God. It becomes a God to you. You understand? Mm-hmm. So the foundation is what matters. That makes it something godly or ungodly. Amen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, another question from Hilda. Mm. Not really a question. Yeah. So she says there are, I think she missed the session when it was beginning. So you just give her a quick breakdown. She asks, there are soul ties that are transmitted sexually. How do you break that? How do you break that? I, I came to this thing, four things, you understand? And, but the sexual, sexual soul ties are very dangerous. People don't know that. Yeah. It's, it's what can destroy your relationship and destroy your life totally. Uh-huh. Now, that's why you have people, people calling, they say have spiritual husbands, spiritual uh-huh. wives. It's because yeah. of these activities. Uh-huh. And sexual soul ties, you can break it, number one, you need to desire to break it. Uh-huh. You need to desire it. And I say, number two, you need to decide. And number three, I say, you need to determine and then number four, number four, you must dedicate yourself to the desire, to the decision, and to the determination that you will overcome it. Mm. And you see, that's why most people, after all these, after all these sexual engagements, they may not go back to a relationship, but they may look for things like pornography to satisfy that feeling they had with their ex. Mm. You understand? They may buy a dog to represent. They're not talking about. And that's why I say it's very dangerous to engage in sexual soul ties, you understand? Because you receive yeah. the other part of the other individual. Mm-hmm. And these are things that never leave you easily. You understand what I'm talking about? Is they never use you unless you decide as an individual, this has come to a place, now I need to accept it, I need to move on. And I shall no longer be subjected under these things in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one question when looking at now aside from youth aside from people who are married people mm. who are divorced are they affected by soul ties yeah they are because it depends on under what circumstances the individual decided to break the relationship mm-hmm. under what circumstances mm-hmm. you understand what I'm talking about remember yeah. there's a child there these guys have been together attached emotionally never forget that these people are having sexual activities together Never forget that these people spend time physically together, biologically they see her and not a child, so they can be tied. They can be tied to each other, that they can't move on. You understand? But yeah. you see, unless they decide, the other party decides, I can move away. That's easy because you need also to remember, assault can be one party. It cannot involve. It cannot. It's not a must involve two people. For example, you are dating someone, 
you can be free from them, but the other person can never be free from you. Yeah. You understand? So you find some person it becomes now a stalker, becomes someone who cannot move on with you without you. He will spend time calling you, interrupting your relationships. You understand what I care about? They can yeah. even end up being violent. Yeah. So I have a I have a contradicting question. Yeah, there's there's something that's bothering me. So yeah. I have a comment from Oliver where he says, in the mm. case where an individual was given a necklace, then you want to get rid of it. If you give it to someone else, it will affect the person. Maybe the person will give them... Okay, I'm not getting clearly what he's saying, but what I'm asking is, when we talk about something like the physical items that you're given by somebody and we call them ties, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are we somehow saying people should not give presents? Because no, we can give presents. Where that one comes from the mother or the grandmother and this is somebody who's still alive. Is there a problem with receiving such gifts? Because even if you create a bond with such a person, like what's the problem with creating a bond with such a person? Now, there's no problem of creating a bond with a person because also you can create a bond with a person without any gift. What I'm yes. trying to say is that if you receive anything that had any spiritual incantation, ah, yes. you understand what I'm talking about? The gift mm -hmm. you're giving, like a blessed you had incantation. Number two, like you're telling me you have a necklace because of your past relationship. You still have that necklace. Not because the necklace is beautiful because the yes. necklace reminds you of something. So you see, it's become already a spiritual thing. It has not longer become a gift. Yeah. You understand? Know, so, so anything that happens, that's what I've told you when we're defining assault tile, how do you know you have assault tile? Look at your reactions towards some things. Mm. Is this something that you can't live without? Then it became part and part of you. That's why when the Bible says, how can you gain the whole world and lose your whole soul? What does the Bible tend to tell you? Let your soul be focused, not having any other thing, be determining your reactions unless it is God. So, but when you see an ex passing by with another girl, you start cursing. They will not make it. They will, they, you understand what I'm about? It means you already have a soul type. Why are you wishing them wrong? Yeah. Why are you cursing? So anything you receive, ask yourself, does it have any spiritual aspect? Like say like for Shadi was given by the grandmother, the grandmother is alive. Uh, that's no problem, you understand? But the problem will be if she, he cherishes that thing even more than the grandmother. <laughs> You understand what I'm talking about? But that thing yeah. becomes its own reflection and image of a grandmother. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? So any yeah. gift you are given takes the superiority over your being, over your soul. It means you're already working in darkness. So it means you will not be able to achieve your, your agenda. Yeah. Okay. And then one other question that I have is... How can the soul tie affect a person? What are the consequences of soul ties? Oh my, there are, there are many, there are many, my friend. It, it, of course, a I can change your reproduction ability. You can end up not being able to conceive later in the future. You understand what I'm about? Because of mockery. You understand what I'm about? You mock the grace of God in your life and it finishes you. A soltai can bleed to death. You remember the son of David had an attraction to the daughter. What did he end to? To death. You understand what I'm about? These things, you have, this, you have a soul tied to power because you have been authority, you don't want to leave it. It becomes part and parcel of you that you are drunk with power. It can lead to death. In, in terms of sexuality, it can affect your marriages. It can affect your ability to be fruitful. You understand? Unless you protect the masses of God. All those things, even you have divorce. Imagine someone divorces someone because they say they cannot perform in bed. Who told you they cannot perform in bed? Huh? Yeah. Why are you saying, huh? It's a result of your soul tie. You say, if you know a man before your time, you will never be satisfied. If you know a woman before your time, you will never be satisfied. That's why God insists on virginity. Because the moment you expose your soul to a knowledge you're not supposed to expose it to, you have, you have opened up yourself to things that you need to address. When Adam and Eve ate of that apple, it needed grace, which is through Christ Jesus, for us to be redeemed. The imagine, it's as simple as that. So certainly it can lead to many consequences. Consequences. If some of us cannot, some of us again are not having relationships for even than more than two months because of our previous relationships. We cannot stay in a relationship more even than a year. Why? Because of our previous what? Relationships. You are tied to the former. Yeah. That's why the Bible says forget the former things. <laughs> God is about to do a new thing. You understand? 
Do not remember yeah. the former things, neither the things of old. So when you have those things, that girlfriend you had in primary, how she was so beautiful, you start despising the present one, how that you know, she used to walk, you know, that's what I'm about. You will have problems. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, uh, Oliver has given us a correction. He says mm. what he means is, if you are mm. given a gift by somebody and it's mm. it has a tie to it already, then if you give it to somebody else, it will affect them. So, if you transfer, like talking about the physical soul ties, if you transfer mm. a present you are given from you to somebody else, say I get... Uh, my birthday gift that you gave me last year and I have a tie with it and I give it to Grace. Is there going to be any transfer of energy to her? Definitely. That's I told you. Is it something that has been transferred because of an incantation? Remember, a soul tie is a spiritual being within a pathway, within an aspect. Okay? When you have a yeah. soul tie, it means there's a, there's a being behind it. There's a force behind it. There's an individuality mm -hmm. behind it. You have likened it to a spiritual image. When the Bible says there's a strong man and he needs another strong man that you to remove it from the room, it means it took a person, part and parcel of you. So what you yes. just did, you do not dissociate yourself from the spirit. You just pass over the spirit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, like, let me use a very simple example. Like praying in the spirit is the gift of God. Is it true? Uh, people yes. praying in tongues and everything. But mm -hmm. you see, there are scenarios where someone lays hands on you and you pray in tongues. What happened? The spirit man of the individual through the Holy Ghost was transferred that you ended up talking in tongues through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a person in that individual and you just initiated it in you. Yeah, yeah so it's possible. Yeah. Okay, and so given the spiritual aspect of soul ties, you hmm. kindly link back soul ties to the Bible. Like, what is the precedence? Where do we learn about soul ties in the Bible? Where do we learn about consequences? Or rather, give us examples of where soul ties were involved in the Bible, just to give it a spiritual backing. To give it a spiritual backing. Now, yes. for example, uh, I've told you about the story of the, uh, the boy, the child of David, okay? The guy, uh, the guy really admired her sister, Tama. You understand? She was so beautiful. She was pleasant to look upon. And what happened? After all that engagement, it led to death. Yes. You understand? Because it brought rivalry between the family. That's why most people as friends end up being enemies because you talked with my girl because someone is tied to that individual. Okay? Yes. Another yeah. example. Look at the sexual habits that passed over in general, David's fine lineage. When David saw a woman, she conceived of her. Is it true? What happened to his children? Until Solomon. How many children wives did Solomon have? <laughs> yeah, and concubines. Wives, wives plus concubines because he had a lot of them. Now what happened? It's uh, something that is passed over. That's why God sets us free from all manner of curses. When Jesus came, it's a, because it's a soul tie. It's something yes. that you have seen. I believe it's something that Solomon observed. All his children observed and they realized, oh, it's okay to have 20 women. It's okay. You understand what I care about? So it became, your soul was informed. When we're talking about a soul, like I told you, it's the center of a human being. It's a bond that is created. When you see that thing, it, a bond is already created. When Jesus said, when you look at a woman lastfully, you've already committed adultery. It's a result of a bond. After watching pornography, you see a woman, you see her naked. What is happening? You've already created a bond with pornography that it became part and parcel of you. That's why even if you're married, you'll still go back and still watch it. Are we clear? You understand yes. what I'm about? Yeah. All right. Um, the other question, the other question that I'm getting from here is that okay, you have already distinguished between generational uh, generational curses and soul ties. You've also told us about soul ties and how they apply for people who've divorced. You've given us the types of soul ties, mm -hmm. and then you've shown us that it's not only limited to people but also objects. Yeah. And then yeah. you have shown us the significance of forgiveness. Now, mm -hmm. there are people who I mm -hmm. would say, even beyond being told that these things exist, they still do not like have that conviction. What would be like what would be your advice to them? Do not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Do not be ignorant. 
is like a lion always looking for who to devour. You understand? Mm. Yes. His work is to kill, to destroy, mm-hmm. and to steal. Yes. Now, if you engage into soul ties, let me use an emotional one. You understand? You are so used to a particular person that you cannot let them go. You understand what I'm about? Even if you say there's a day you have gone forward, it will not be easy for you. Yeah. Are we clear? For example, like losing someone. Let us just use an example like losing someone who's dearer to you. How do someone feel? What makes you weep? What makes you cry? Is the soul. The soul tells you you will miss a big thing. So those people who say there's nothing like that and they engage into anything, what happens? The Bible says they end up having a dead conscience. You understand? That's what the enemy does. Their conscience becomes dead that they feel nothing. But without them realizing, it affects people. It will end up affecting your generation, your children's children. You understand what I'm talking about? So when your consciousness is dead, you may never think that whatever I'm doing has repercussion. And you see, those are the things that lead you to curses. That's why people end up killing someone, murdering someone, say, uh, if it's better I kill you than you go. Because you're already tied. You can never lie to yourself. What can make someone say something like that? It's a soul. The soul has already matched this person that they don't believe I can be without you. Yeah. Yeah. I will throw out. Imagine someone. Let me use a very hilarious illustration. Those people don't believe in soul ties. A fan of Arsenal or Manchester yeah. or Liverpool or even during World Cup. You hear a man killed himself because their team lost. Which team? Was it your team? Do you own it? <laughs> Is that your soul that was just tied to it? So you can't tell me what makes someone kill themselves. How, do, as we, how does it affect a man's mood when they get home? They don't even want to talk to their wives. Because their yeah. team lost. Their yeah. soul is very precious to that. Someone will stay up to midnight to watch UEFA Cup Champions League, which is okay, but they will not stay there to just maybe attend to their family. What's the yes. reason? Their soul is more tied to that thing. So the soul ties even give, makes things to be on priority. You can be in a relationship because you do not handle your former relationship, it becomes a problem. Yeah. So it's something that is there. You tell me what makes people kill themselves when they're watching football? So those I, people I, should not live in denial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Now, one question, mm. a key question. When you break mm. a soul, are you totally free from it or is there a possibility of going back? Now it comes again to your desire, your decision. Mm-hmm. And how determined are you? Yes. If I decide to break myself from any relationship, I need to make a choice. Mm. You understand? Yes. I will only talk to you on a mental knowledge, mental level, but not in a soul aspect. Uh-huh. When I talk to you in a soul aspect, it means I'll pour out myself 100% of me to you. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about? But if I yeah. talk to you in a mental aspect, I'm talking to you on the platform of whatever we're engaging in. So most people who fall back is because they said, I missed you. I just came back to check on you. It is the soul which was pouring back himself to the owner. So it's possible to stay away, but also it's very impossible to stay away unless you decide, have a desire and determine you stay away. Yes. Yeah. Most people okay. have gone back to their former relationship because of that, you know? And they were being beaten there. They were never given attention. No one was helping yeah. them, but they're just there. Yes. Mm. Okay. So there is, what, what I'm getting from you is that there's a possibility to totally be free from a soul type. But it all comes with the decision that you want to be free from it. And it takes discipline, if I may add, it takes discipline for you to decide that I have broken this bond with so and so. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of it. Or this is what connected me to my past. I am breaking it and that's the end of it. At times, like I was telling you last week, there was a discussion we once had in the women's fellowship group. And I, I was telling mommy, the reason why it's very hard for people to maintain secondary virginity is because you've already tasted of the fruit. So yeah. unless unless you look at it from a bigger picture, you'll be tempted to break the tie and then go back to doing what you were doing before. And that's going to, to be a problem. And, then, yes, yes. and the next question I'm going to ask you, which will probably be my second last question, is that you have discussed about the consequences of soul ties. At times, we develop very toxic behaviors from soul ties, and we pick them from those ties. How can you mm. break toxic behaviors? Because 
they have become a part of you yeah you mm-hmm. have brought alter yes but there is a pattern that is still constant in your life how do you break that pattern yeah number one, any character is embedded in you you have a decision to maintain it or not the yes. the people the intellectual say it takes 21 days to break a habit you understand yes. so now if you never used to drink but because of your dating lifestyle you started to drink you never used to go for clubbing but because of your lifestyle you started to go for clubbing you understand what i'm talking about now yes. number one, for you to break anything like that you must first of all come to acknowledgement and identify where is my problem identify yeah. it now that's what i'm saying if you go to a relationship and does not change it for the better mm-hmm. there's a problem there you understand so look at yourself after every relationship that you have been in how did it develop you or what did it destroy in you mm-hmm. so if you realize it destroyed you from your passion towards god it's already an indicator i need to stop those things that make me stop having passion towards god mm-hmm. you understand You used to be a Sunday Christian but now days on Sunday is the day you wash your clothes because you used to go and wash your boyfriend's clothes on Sundays your own service yeah that's what I get about so yeah, so yeah you become a public housewife so now they wonder today you didn't go to church again now you became a habit because it took you away from God and that's what I get about yeah. so that you identify that by the way before I met you I used to have this so I don't believe in relationships that change people I believe in relationship that develop people. When you hear someone say why do you want to change me? Why is someone changing you in relationship? There's something wrong with that person. Why are you changed? I like you the way you are. I'm not supposed to change you. I'm supposed to develop you. Yes. You know if I find you singing, I should in- insist on developing your singing capacity, not the other way around. You know what I'm talking about? So you need to identify what is it that you stopped doing. and you need to change it if you are very sexually active person you need to identify oh by the now this my hormonal i have a lot of hormonal imbalance i have so much desires you need to try to put yourself you used to watch a lot of pornography with your partner now you need to decide i will not watch pornography even break your laptop if you need to and then it hey. will take you time it will take you time to buy another one yes yeah. <laughs> i'm just saying you just mean to be, you just mean to be determined to change it identify yeah. the problem change it Just identify it and change it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, my final question to you today mm. is concerning soul ties. What is your advice to the youth out there? What is your advice to anybody who's already running to soul ties? Oh, before I give you my final question, somebody mm. has decided to alert me that uh, they are not done with their questions. So, Shani, mm. yeah? <laughs> <laughs> is addiction a soul tie do the difference is any yeah it's addiction is a soul tie when you can't sleep without masturbating so it means you already have a partner yeah when you can't sleep without watching pornography when you can't leave someone thing without stealing mm-hmm. so stealing has become a soul tie mm-hmm. they used to say it in kiswahili i don't know what is the word when you someone who has really quick fingers to steal There's a word yes. used to use. Mkono mrefu. Yeah? Uh, yes, I was looking for. I wanted to tell you nini vidole vita kuna kuna. Yeah. You understand? What makes you just kuna kuna? What makes you just feel like you're so itchy? You understand? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you are you just love having women around you. Uh-huh. Yeah, without the kind of women you cannot exist. Yeah. You won't survive. You know what I'm about? That's already a tie you have. You know what I'm talking about? you understand that that's already a development so an addiction can be a soul tie and that's yeah. the truth most of the stuff, that's why like i'm saying sexual activity some people mm-hmm. cannot live with sex and they are not married i don't know who they have sex with mm-hmm. yeah it's not right mm. it's not right at all at all because you already made it a person remember i said something very critical maybe you do not get me uh-huh. a soul tie that is not addressed the develops a spiritual person a spiritual mm-hmm. what person that spiritual person becomes part and parcel of you unless yeah. you are delivered from me it will continue talking to you by the way yeah. everyone has got to sleep why don't you go yeah. to the sufuria and now the chicken mm-hmm. as many people wonder why is the chicken why is the chicken the kitchen making noise because someone is eating chicken mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you about yeah you are yeah. the someone who is on, on the sufuria you can't eat without the sufuria uh-huh. it is a part and parcel so you are married you tell your wife i where i was raised i meet under the sufuria Yeah. So anything, it is my own. It uh-huh. became part and parcel of you. 
You understand? But because of consistency, the spiritual man became part and parcel of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually laughing at a comment here about addiction. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tabasamu, who also happens to be my sister, is telling us what were addiction, ya Maria. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and then in line with that, Shadi is also mm. asking, is it possible to have a soul time with yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Where well, you exalt yourself before any other thing. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar stood and said, look at what I've made. What did God do? Mm -hmm. God turned him into an he took yeah. the glory. Yeah. When you think you are the only source and the only, uh, the, only the man and the only man, mm -hmm. there's no other man like you. Yeah. You're already, you already full of yourself. Mm -hmm. The moment you're full of yourself, you lose. You understand? And that's one thing that the Bible talks about, the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Some people have individuals of pride of life. When you have a pride of life, you think you're the only one. So it's possible to be so self-centered. And you check yeah. most relationships, people get, you tell someone who's selfish, you will cry all the days of your life. Because they love themselves too much. Even as much as you are a wife, they cannot share with you a pen. They will tell yeah. you, go and buy your own. True. So you're obsessed with yourself. You believe uh -huh. you're the intelligent person, you're the most handsome, the most beautiful, you have the best body, you have the what, whatever it is. It won't help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, before we go on, because I'm just about to ask you to give your final words. But before yeah. I ask, of you to do that i am just going to say a big thank you to everybody that has joined in today uh, thank you so much for that understanding because i think we've mostly believed that the only soul ties that exist are the sexual ones and so maybe we've been creating bonds with other things and we didn't know we were creating soul ties with them yeah so on that note oh on that note <laughs> you know it's really what funny what just about to end and I'm seeing other people joining and this is when they're bringing their questions. What will be your last advice to everybody out there who has been watching? Yeah, you need to accept so ties are real. Have you ever had some story in the, in the news that someone was beaten to death because of food? Yeah. Someone was beaten. Have you ever been beaten because of that? No. At least you but really there, <laughs> okay, there are some people beaten because of shilingi. You understand yeah. what you're about? Yeah. What happened there? The individual formed a relationship with that thing. Mm. Object or an object. You understand? Some yes. people are so tight with people that they cannot let them go. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. You understand? That's yeah. why God wants your soul only to be tied to Him. That's why He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believe in Him should not perish. Where God mm. prefers, let your soul be tied to Him. God mm. gave you these passions for you, focus on Him. The moment you divert that passion to something else, it becomes a problem. And the enemy takes advantage of it. And it can affect your future. It can affect everything that you do, including even your job. Some people have best intelligence capacity ever, but they have a soul tie with money. So any money they get, they will eat it instead of investing it. Rome takakitu, natakatu kitu, natakatu kitu. Now, the money was supposed to help you, but because you have a tie with the money, you want to show it off. You cannot settle yourself down. So yeah. these things are real, but God has a solution. When you have a soul tie, it means you are having a small God in your life. We have a small God. You can't live without it. Why don't you believe God to give you a solution? Uh -huh. Why don't you commit yourself to having God in your life for your own rescue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for sparing time to take us through the session of all ties today. Yeah, yeah. But next week we'll be starting talking about waiting. Most people mm -hmm. have issues with waiting, you know. Yeah. Uh, waiting in aspects of, for example, the right time to be married, the right time to start a relationship. And I think we'll go to all the concept of dating and everything from there. Yeah. And I pray God will give us understanding. Because if you know how to wait, you won't be having soul ties with every other man, believing that they'll be the right man. You understand? Yes. There's a man for you. Not every man is your own. Not every chicken in the city you're supposed to eat. Simple. Okay? The specific chicken that you're supposed to eat. Hallelujah. So I pray in the name of Jesus, every listener who's going through any addiction, who's tied to any soul, I pray God will help you. May God deliver you. May your soul receive light and be free from all manner of darkness 
that Christ becomes the center of your focus in the name of Jesus Christ. As you seek God, may you be free. Any addiction you have been going through that you have been fighting to overcome through any tie you have had with it from generational till now, I pray you are free from it. We break those bonds in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. You are preserved. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Thank Amen. you for all the watchers. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week by the grace of God. Amen and amen. Have a lovely time. Amen. Bye-bye.